Welcome back to another weekly roundup of cloud gaming news brought to you by yours truly. Remember, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest in cloud gaming, be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. And of course, if you enjoy the content, give the video a like, helps the channel out a lot. But for now, let's get into this week's cloud gaming news. Let's start off with Stadia, who are holding yet another free weekend for Stadia Pro subscribers. This weekend, you'll get to try out not one, but two games on Stadia. We have Tom Clancy's Breakpoint and WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Let me know which one of these you're more interested in trying out in the comments down below. Next, in very vague Stadia news, we got the usual APK breakdown from the guys over at 9to5Google, who have uncovered two plain text sentences stating a hailstorm coming soon and introducing Project Hailstorm from Stadia. And uh, th that's it. That's all we have on this very ominous piece of news. I'm just super interested to see what you think this might mean. Uh, let me know any predictions in the comments down below. That's all I got on this one. <laughs> but as part of that APK breakdown, we also got confirmation that co-op couch gameplay for Stadia is in the works. For those who have a second controller, this feature will allow you to pair the second controller as a guest and play some of the wide variety of party style games on Stadia with an actual live human person in the same room as you, which is just a strange concept here in 2021. And finally, cloud gamers and LG TV fans alike can rejoice as LG plans to release native apps for both Stadia and GeForce Now on their upcoming TVs. Stadia is expected to become available first in the second half of 2021 on LG's lineup of OLED, QNED and NanoCell TVs. God, I'm so behind on TV technology. <laughs> with GeForce Now coming, quote, sometime later. As well, last week, Sony announced their 2021 lineup of TVs, which will all run Google TV. So it's safe to say once Stadia is supported on Google TV, it will also be accessible on Sony TVs across the board. Which leads us nicely onto the big news from NVIDIA this week. NVIDIA announced their plans to expand their cloud gaming service GeForce Now to Australia, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey, but with no definitive launch date yet announced, with NVIDIA stating, quote, later this year. This is achieved for a partnership program called GeForce Now Alliance, which consists of telecom agencies from around the world helping to push the service out in these new regions. Next, we have a nice quality of life improvement for the Shield TV and Shield TV Pro. The most recent update allows the dedicated streaming device from NVIDIA to now support both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X controllers, as well as bringing the devices up to Android's December 2020 security patch level. As always, it's great to see NVIDIA continuing to support this device, which this year turns six years old. Now, at the start of the month, we talked about the long list of games NVIDIA announced to be adding to GeForce Now throughout January, but said this wasn't an inclusive list, as more titles could be added throughout the month. And this week is no exception, with seven new titles being added, which I'll throw up on screen here. This includes a day and date release with Hitman Free, as well as a couple of free games worth grabbing, including old school MMORPG Rift and Magic Wielding Battle Royale Spellbreak. Moving on to xCloud, we have more titles added this week with some heavy hitters on the way. Firstly, for xCloud this week, we received Desperados Free, Donut County and Outer Wilds, with Cyber Shadow and Yakuza 3, 4 and 5 remastered all being added next week. Of course, if you're part of the Game Pass Ultimate subscription, that also gets you Game Pass for PC, which this week we got access to Control, and on January 28th, on the day of its release, we'll be getting access to The Medium, which is a brand new horror title, kind of being branded as the first next-gen horror game. This is basically down to the type of gameplay where you'll need a pretty decent setup, uh, some decent specs to be able to seamlessly jump between the two in-world games. And finally, let's finish off with a Shadow update. Last week, of course, we went over the Q1 2021 roadmap for Shadow and some of the big things they have planned for this year. In case you missed that, I'll link to that video right here. Well, in just one short week, three of those developments are already available for you to get your grubby little hands on. Firstly, Chromebook support is officially here. If you have a Chromebook with access to the Play Store, simply search for the Shadow Chromebook beta app and yeah, it, it just, it works now. 
Secondly, we talked about the new version of the Shadow app, which will support ARM-based processors. This will eventually lead to support of hardware like the Raspberry Pi, which I'm personally very excited about. But for now, there is a Mac version available in an alpha state to support the new MacBooks running M1 ARM processors. That app is currently only available via a link, which I have helpfully placed in the description down below. At least, if I've remembered to. And finally, dual screen support is now available in an alpha state for both Windows and Mac and is accessible through the Alpha app, which again can be downloaded through a link, which I have potentially left in the description down below. But well, that's it for me this week. So of course, if you enjoyed the video, you found it somewhat helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next video. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.